Hey, welcome to Speechless. We are glad to have you here. We're having the show that I've wanted to have for a long time. We're going to be talking about Common Core. We have a special guest on to uh, explain Common Core and what's going on in our education system. If you're a parent, you have to be and uh, have kids or going to have kids. You need to be watching this show. If you're not a parent, you need to watch it anyway because it's about the values of this nation and what's being done to undermine the family through our school system, through the curriculum. And a grandparent, it's about your grandkids, it's about your posterity. And you need to stand up too. And hopefully at the end of the show, you'll be called uh, in, into action. You have to do something. You can't just know about it, you have to act. And you can't sit at home and say, you know, wow, that's too bad. Uh, yeah, it is too bad. But you got to move into action. So that's what our show will be about tonight. But before that, I want to give some update on the judiciary and some things going on in the courts. Um, two more judges in the appellate court decided to retire and instead of, or leave, I, th I think it's retire. And instead of having the seats open for election, they are allowing Governor Dayton to appoint judges for these positions and taking this taking away the right of us as citizens to vote which is our constitutional right to vote for judges but judges are playing this game of I'll retire so my political party can appoint a judge and then they get the heads up they get the incumbent behind their name and uh, they get the advantage for the election and although that is constitutional as far as you know getting appointed if there's a vacancy in office what isn't constitutional uh, what it, it's constitutional that that happens for the appointment however the priority is the election but most judges somewhere around 98 percent of them get appointed first it's actually supposed to be the other way around and so our judges are scamming the system all constitutional but they're scamming it because you're not getting to elect your judges you're not getting to know about your judges in these uncontested judicial races so right now governor dayton he's going to appoint a couple judges for the appellate court and he's seeking attorneys to fill those spots or he may go of course judges have to be attorneys uh, so he uh, may be looking at a judge to fill that spot in the lower courts uh, so I just want you to be aware of that pay attention make recommendations to Governor Dayton as who should be a judge at the appellate court level also remind him that he's taking away your right to vote for a judge and further causing the lack of transparency in our judicial system and of course our judicial system will go out and say we're the best in the in the United States thus making us best in the world but they cover up and that's not in that's not different than what's taking place in our public schools and we're going to hear more about that uh, in a while now another update um, as you know I go to Supreme Court I go to the appellate courts I'll, I'll film in those courts and I film at the legislature but you know where I can't film that's in our district courts and of course I can it's it's an option that's provided by state law it's an option that's guaranteed by the United States Constitution with the freedom of the press and that means also to hold the judiciary accountable through film and through that form of media and but although the Supreme Court and the appellate courts require 24-hour notice which is reasonable because they're may be a number of people that want to film so they have pool feeds technical issues to deal with but at the district court level it's 10 days uh, the yeah 10 days notice at the district court level and all the parties have to agree and if somebody objects then the judge can overrule but it's not likely so in a case in Dakota County where they're trying to frame a attorney who was arrested and had to defend her client in the courtroom in handcuffs the attorney uh, when the court took away the court papers and 
I want to film the trial. So she's been charged with five different charges of violating certain laws, felony level laws, for taking a picture in the courtroom. Mind you, no court in session, just her and a, and a deputy were in the courtroom. And it's a court rule that's being violated. Nothing criminal, but they're going to charge her anyway. And now the word is, and I think kind of because of the pressure of the press wanting to film and go in there and watch this case and make it known, word is they may be dropping the charges. Uh, however, the harassment that she went through, and it's amazing that this judge in the order, I mean, the attorney was trying a case, a civil law case, okay, when she was arrested. And in that civil law case, Judge Knudsen gave a 72-page order stating why the attorney was arrested and that he had nothing to do with it. 72 pages. Unbelievable. Judge Knudsen, of course, if you've seen the other shows, and you can go to the website, uh, youtube.com backslash speechlessmn and watch uh, last week's videos and, and other videos with uh, Michelle McDonald on there. You can watch those videos and get caught up to speed on what is happening in those cases. Just unbelievable what Judge Knudsen is doing. Now, also, I want to remind you, if you want to call in, if you have a comment or question, there's a phone number there, 651-747-3838. And if you don't want to call in but have comments or suggestions or questions or things you want to see on the show, go to speechlessmn at gmail.com. And uh, I appreciate all the comments I get so far, and um, keep, keep it up. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to get to the main part of the show. And I, I just uh, find this astounding. But uh, A.J. Kern, I want to thank you for being on the show here. Thank you for having me. I'm well, excited to be here. And now you live in St. Cloud area, right? Right. So mm -hmm. you've come all the way down here in this heat right. wave that we have going here today <laughs> anyway. It was worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you've been studying the Common Core curriculum, but you've also have had some other experiences with government and that have gotten you and other experiences in life that have gotten you to find out what's going on in our public schools. So right. why don't you just give us a little bit background of what you've done and who you are. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, I have two daughters, and they were in private schools for most of their K-12 career. At some point in high school, they decided they wanted to go to public school. <clears throat> okay. And um, my husband and I just had no idea how bad it was. Um, when you're in private school, um, there's just a lot of rigor, uh, expectations. Um, it's just different. And okay. in public school... Um, the one my kids were in, um, only 18% of the kids were graduating proficient in math. It, wait, 18%? 18%. That sounds like a failing grade for the school. Definitely. That's what I thought. All right. So, um... Well, I, I, you kind of mentioned a distinction between private school and, and the public school. You're, you're saying that the public school was just, the standards were just a lot, lot lower? Right. Okay. Um... Just, just the reading. Um, my children were very rigorous reading and literature. Mm -hmm. uh, when they changed over to the public high school, they thought they were on vacation. Um, you know, it the it it just wasn't the same rigor it, it, and the same expectations. And how long did it take you to figure out that this was going on? That this not long. Not long. Not long. No. And uh, other issues came up, and I thought, well, you just go talk to the principal or the superintendent or the school board members, and that's just not true. Um, well, you can go talk to them, can't you? Um, it, it's, it, you can, but it, it's like with the superintendent. We had some issues, and I went up to the school, and I said, you know, I'd like to come in and meet with you on this certain topic, and um, he never met with us. And 
So it, it was very frustrating, and one thing led to another. Did he, did he recommend somebody lower to meet with, saying, I, I'm a little busy, but please talk uh, to the I, staff I met person? with other people, but their basic goal was just to make us happy enough to go away. Okay. So, um, but eventually, um, I did run for school board unsuccessfully. Mm -hmm. um, we keep thinking that school board elections are um, <laughs> nonpartisan. They are partisan. Unions find their candidate, they push them, they get them in, Right. And um, I, I think Heather McDonald had a great piece, uh, Union Influence at the Ballot Box. Um, the union members they, and leadership care about who sits across the table when it's negotiation time. Mm -hmm. And um, they didn't want someone like me getting in and not going along and getting along. So And trying to hold the unions accountable and, right. and having a contrarian view. Exactly. Uh, you still probably would have been outvoted on the board? Um, or would it could have, be. Could have been. It could be. I think sometimes maybe you're able to talk some sense and uh, yeah. come with some evidence right. and, and explain why things should be done differently. Okay. Um, when I was uh, getting more and more parents to understand how the performance in the math was so bad, mm -hmm. um, well, it takes numbers to get things done. Well, a lot of parents I was speaking to was saying, you know what, my kids are crying at the dinner table. When I can't help them with this math. We had adopted uh, a constructivist uh, integrated new math that the U.S. Department of Education had highly recommended, and it, and it doesn't work. And the parents knew it, it wasn't working. They knew it a long time before the school board members. Mm -hmm. And um, finally, during this campaign, I, I was at least happy that we got some momentum and enough parents began calling, complaining, talking. So they had a big meeting oh, with the parents did. in the auditorium. And they started off trying to control it. And I, I went, no, nope, no, nope, and I did my thing. And they ended up changing the math, um, the English language arts, and the science. And hey, improvements happen. So, but I was the bad guy. And, uh, <laughs> but you, you really ended up being the good person for the kids, for the parents, but... I think so, but... The, but you're still <laughs> going to be the bad guy in the administration's mind. Oh, yeah. Well, this is not different. I mean, my sister ran for school board in Spokane, Washington. I'm hearing... I mean, you're speaking the same language mm -hmm. that she was speaking and experiencing, only she didn't have that type of success, and the kids are suffering. The math grades there are just terrible. Matter of fact, the kids that are graduating from high school have to go to the junior college in order to get their math skills. And, and, and so they're, by the time they're done with the junior college, they're just up to and maybe not even getting to the, to the mm -hmm. high school level. And our, our high schools are not, uh, our schools are not preparing our kids for college. They're just not. In great, well, or in life. great numbers or life. <laughs> um, but here's the thing: we ha we have a number of things going on, like with the superintendents in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. You know, they can moonlight. N so here's my superintendent. Wait, wait. You mean they can have more than yes. one job? Yeah, they can earn money on the side. Um, well, didn't some university professors? Well, the, you're talking superintendents here, but we're teaching at two different universities, and some got in trouble for that. But so yeah. this is not supposed to happen. That's why we're supposed um, to, that's why we pay them so well. They get paid more than the governor. Uh-huh. And you'd think that they would focus on doing a good job. They're being paid well enough to do it. But, um, no, they, they can moonlight. And like I said, it, I, I, I started watching. I started going to school board meetings. And eventually this kind of turned up that um, this moonlighting was going on. And I'm like, y you know what? This is a problem. I, so. I want to address one issue. Just so people know, um, you can go to TwinCities.com. It's the Pioneer Press website. And, and they have what's called Data Planet. And you can go look into Data Planet, uh, Twin City, uh, TwinCities.com, uh, under uh, News. Uh, you just you click on you. Hold your mouse over that. It goes all the way down at the bottom. It says Data Planet. You go on there. You can find out your superintendent's salary. 
for any school district. You can find out your teacher's salary for any school district in the state for, for last year. Uh, but they got another job. You, you found out your superintendent had another job. Um, yeah, he, he, he was enhancing his banking account, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, well, who so, was he working for? Um, well, there was an architectural firm that had built our brand new high school, which local people called it the palace. Uh -huh. um, so he was moonlighting for them. I guess he was going to other school districts and trying to get them to hire this firm. I, I don't know. I, I don't know the details. But I do know that um, I went to the state to say, you know, isn't this a conflict of interest? And the state said, no, no, no problem. But then another agency, uh, I went and said, well, his contract says he can do this, but he has to have school board approval. So why didn't we know about this? Well, because he and the chair kind of had a deal in the back room, and he wasn't going before the school board to get school board approval. So that was a problem. The state did say that they were violating pub public data laws. But guess what? There's no consequence, so who cares? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, violating public data, well, there's very little consequences on some of these issues. But I actually was talking to uh, someone back in Spokane, Washington, when uh, the state wasn't releasing information, and she actually won $130,000 out in Washington State oh. for the, the school district uh, not giving her information. Um, so, and also Matamidi School District here, very close, um, I tried to film, I don't know if you remember, you saw some of it on my show and Bob Zick's show, or where the school superintendent was getting together with the mayors and other leaders in the community. I tried to film it, they kicked me out of there, you know, I mean this is, this is a public meeting, you know, and they, they kicked me out, they didn't want people to know what they were discussing about. Of course, they ended up building the Matamidi School on a dump site, very close to a dump site. And a number of people in the area are working to pass a law that says you can't build a school within a quarter of a mile of a dump site. You know, unbelievable that that hasn't been done yet. But mm -hmm. So you're finding this out. Uh, but this interconnection of the superintendents actually working for construction companies on the side and, and um, the architectural, architectural firm. firms, mm -hmm. that doesn't surprise me because that's, that's more of been that, my thinking. More of that's going on than we realize. Right. And I, I don't, how, how can this be? Why, why do we let, shouldn't they just be doing their job, especially when they're getting paid so well? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you add in all the benefits and retirement and all that, I mean, they're, they're doing very well, and our well, kids aren't. Maybe it's hush money. That maybe that's why they're getting paid so well. <laughs> okay, um, so you're you've you found out this going on. This is going on, but you've also been involved in other areas of uh, government up in in the Saint Cloud area. Um, well, I was a Benton County Planning Commissioner. Okay. Yeah, and th that's the other thing. Uh, I'm going to school board meetings, and um, as a planning commissioner, when we would go to every application, we had public input for and against. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could get to the right answer. Sure. And so as a parent, you go to a school board meeting, they might give you two minutes to speak at their designated time, but when they have agenda items, why, why don't parents who they're serving get to provide input and with respect? Mm -hmm. And this, how, how do we get to this, and is this legal? Should we challenge it? I, I think we should. Um, years ago, when America was a, a leader in education, who was really in charge of education? It was parents. Right. The more that unions take over and um, teacher colleges grow, we've gone downhill quick. But we, we keep looking to them mm -hmm. for the solutions. And... I think it's, it's the wrong direction. We need to get back to parents. Yes, parents know. Uh, they know when there's a problem. Listen, you know, we should be able to speak on agenda items at a school board meeting. Well, absolutely. And of course, we see this problem here in, in Maplewood, uh, you know, where they've taken out, did a tremendous effort to take away citizen comment and uh, minimize speech. And I, your point on hearing both sides 
because you get the contradictory information and then you can sort it out if you just mm -hmm. if you don't hear that you, you there's there's nothing to compare things with exactly and contrast and and then it leaves a really a hollow decision that could be very destructive so we, we you you have some information for us though on common core and the education system but before right. we get into that anything else you want to add about your background or other um, I, I think it's important. Um, my, my children are actually successfully off in college. Mm -hmm. um, I continue to speak up because uh, my children were retaliated against when I spoke up. And I think that even the great teachers don't feel like they can speak up. And I think that parents sometimes are going it alone and or they're afraid to say something. Mm -hmm. um, I have a friend whose daughter um, was in a small school district and the day after the last presidential elections uh, she went in to uh, wake up her child and and the child remembered that it was election day the day before and she's like oh mommy who did you vote for and uh, she said well I voted for Romney and she said her daughter started crying just very upset and she's like what is going on and um, wow. the child is like my teacher said that you should vote for Obama. Wow. Well, my friend, I said, are you going to go to the principal? <laughs> Why is this teacher speaking to these first graders about this? And um, she says, I don't want my child to be retaliated against. I, I don't want her to be singled out so if I start complaining. Yeah. So well, I'm continuing to fight the fight because there's parents that are afraid to. Right. Or can't. Yes. Yeah. What kind of retaliation did they do to you and your family? Um, well, besides having our yard decorated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there um, wasn't a, a, a senior high prank of students? Or? Uh, I, I guess you could say that. But <laughs> um, like my, my one daughter, um, the one daughter had gone off to college. The other one was still there. Um, she was in a class, and the teacher had to leave early um, because they were discussing changing the curric the science curriculum and this teacher looked at my daughter the whole time and said well I have to leave class early because someone's parent is complaining about the curriculum and so we probably have to change it and it was things like that so wow. actually after that when she came home and she said well I don't know what you and dad are going to do but you better do something because I'm not going to that school for my senior year we packed up. That's what your and daughter I took her, said? That's what she said. I can't take it anymore. Wow. And so we, I took her to Costa Rica. She went her senior year there. So sometimes good things come out of bad. <laughs> well, you're, you're a good parent. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, that was a positive experience in Costa Rica. And not everyone can do that. And so. you no, know, not everyone can. <laughs> but, you know, not a lot of people don't even think that that's an option. <laughs> You know, and so how was the school system down there? Well, it was it was a little private school, uh -huh. and they had a mix of kids from, they were Italian and German and Costa Rican, and, and wow. my daughter, she had started Spanish in private school in uh -huh. sixth, sixth grade. You know, that's another thing. You know, private school, we start, like, language early. Why can't we do some of these things in public school? It's like... They're, they're so busy talking about sex ed or social justice or all these other things instead of just sticking to academics. And, you know, my other daughter took well, Latin, yeah. um, which helps with science. I, I don't know why we have to lower the bar so far. So. Yeah, s schools are now teaching more of a religion than yep. education, than school. Right. What right. happened to the academics? Right. Okay, so... Um, you're very creative <laughs> in, 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 in dealing with this issue. But because of that, you've done a lot of studying on schools, and you're mm -hmm. associated with Minnesotans Against Common Core. Yes, and I've just recently joined Minnesotans Against Common Core. Okay. Um, our goal is to inform, equip, empower, and uh, uh, essentially, ultimately, repeal this thing, we hope. We hope we can get the momentum going and for the public to understand that this is a power grab by the federal government um, to ultimately have a managed economy. And mm -hmm. um, they're dumbing down the kids. And uh, so hopefully we'll get into that. I'm skimming the surface. 
and hopefully at another time you can have Just someone else on to really get into the muck of it. It's kind of a broad overview but, here. Um, but, um, well, go into it here. I want I, to encourage people to go to Common Core mn.com okay. and um, just kind of look at there's a lot on the internet just tons but our site Minnesotans Against Common Core mm -hmm. um, you can find a lot of good videos and information to get you up to speed but mm -hmm. we're talking about public education and part of what I've researched over the years is that um, the research does prove that highly effective teachers plus proven curriculum equals academic success mm -hmm. so um, I wanted to say something about, um, Catherine Kirsten had a great piece in Star Tribune talking about um, what's happened in this last legislative session. Um, Governor Dayton, DFL, mm -hmm. the legislature is controlled by the DFL, and they claimed it was like the education session. Well, let's look at what they did. Okay. They eliminated the high school grad test. So basically, high school children, high school kids uh, only have to warm a seat to get a diploma. Uh-huh. Um, that should give parents a lot of confidence. Um, they eliminated the requirement for new teachers to pass the basic skills test at wait, least wait, for the wait, next two years. Wait a minute. The teachers don't have to do the basic skills test? Right. They had to before? Yes. And how long to had that been? To receive a license. In, and how long had that been in effect? Uh, I think since forever. Okay. So we're working to dumb this down, lower the bar. Hmm. It, it's... Um, it's apparently the Governor Dayton and the DFL think that uh, selling and buying a piece of property is more important than who's teaching your child because realtors still have to take a test to get their realtor license. Mm -hmm. um, apparently teachers don't. Wow. Um, yeah, it's devastating. It really is devastating. Um, they rejected a bill preventing Minnesota students um, from being assigned to a low-performing teacher for two years in a row. Um, Really? We know who those teachers are. <laughs> well, that, that's amazing. So they are analyzing the teachers to see how well they're doing. And so... Some tool. They, they some have tool something they have. going on. That and they know if a teacher has been underperforming for two years, they, they can measure that. Or for some time. Or for some time. Um, I, yeah. I, I'm not sure what the uh, tools are that they're using to gauge that, but... So there was a bill there to say, hey, if the teacher's not performing, you as a parent have, a, have an option of moving your yeah, kids to a Yeah, let's try teacher. to prevent kids from having a low-performing teacher for two years. I think the research says something like if they've had a low-performing teacher for three years in a row, it's almost impossible to ever get them back up to speed. Hmm. They're, they're set back so far. Um, Governor Dayton also, I think in 2012, uh, vetoed legislation uh, repealing LIFO, last in, first out. Hmm. So you could have a newer teacher that's actually an extraordinary teacher, but she's going to get bumped out before the teacher that's been there for 100 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Well, there's a lot of games that get played with this. In St. Paul, they're getting rid of some of their high-quality teachers that have some seniority in order to hire lower-quality, well, mm -hmm. inexperienced teachers. Because the, they're playing, well, they say they're playing that budget game, but they're saying these teachers aren't performing when they are. Oh, yes, you know, dollars. So it, it always comes back to dollars. It, yeah, that, that type of thing. Okay. Um, so the Minnesota approach is uh, we have teachers who are not recruited from the top of the academic pool, and the next slide will, you'll see what I'm talking about. So you look at top-performing countries like Finland, um, their teachers come from the top 10% of the academic pool. And, you know, the other, South Korea, Singapore, Poland, they're all doing the same thing. They're addressing teacher quality, and we are doing exactly the opposite. Um, so the teacher colleges don't have any requirement for who's coming in to become a teacher. Um, and the teacher colleges are failing to prepare our teachers in that they've gotten away from a focus on subject knowledge uh, on how to teach, a focus on how to teach. And then again, uh, social engineers and social scientists have gotten a control of our teacher colleges. Mm -hmm. So they're pushing the whole social justice and touchy-feely and how to be change agents. There's actually a class on how to be a change agent. Uh, I noticed in tran teacher transcripts. Um, so eliminating the basic skills test. And then also in Minnesota, we have hundreds of teachers with these uh, waivers and variances 
with their license. Um, so we have hundreds of teachers teaching the wrong subject in the wrong grade level. I mean, uh, I think that probably is a problem. <laughs> um, in my district, we have a high school teacher teaching math. Uh, I did a public data request, and I would recommend to many parents to do this public data request. It's very simple. You send an email to the superintendent. Dear superintendent, this is a public data request. I would like a copy of all the transcripts of all the degrees for your secondary math and science mm -hmm. teachers. So I have this teacher's um, transcript. Well, that's got to tick people off right oh, there. Oh, they, they did not want to give it to me. We had to go back and forth. and. Um, so did they not give it to you within the required time period? They, they did. Okay. Um, and then they redact the teacher's names. Uh, but I had them number them. So teacher number 15, and then they put the number 15 on the transcript. So I know who it, So teacher number 15 teaches high school okay. math. Then they have the number 15 on the tra corresponding transcript. So okay. I know who's who. I don't know the name, but I know what subject, and is it middle school or is it high school? Mm -hmm. So I look at this teacher. This teacher has an elementary education degree and not no college algebra class, no geometry, no trig, no calculus, but this teacher must have a waiver or a variance because this teacher is teaching high school math. Well, I get confused on this a little bit. You're not talking about somebody who's been experienced in the field and gets a waiver of variance to no. come in and teach on a subject. No. You're just saying they're not experienced, but they say, well, teach it anyway. We'll let you teach this, even right. though you don't have the experience or knowledge to teach it. Th this is, this is I I've even talked to Republicans that, that are teachers and think this. Th I've, I've had someone say, any teacher can pick up a book and teach it. Uh, no. Hmm. No, they can't. Right. Um, no. Uh, I've been to college. <laughs> I, well, I know I, that there's some subjects and some textbooks. I have two college degrees, and I tell you, there, there's some things right. that I know I can't pick up and teach it to someone else. Right. I'll be good to, do, to read it myself and get, get from it what I need to. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that thinking is flawed. Mm -hmm. um, now, alternative teacher licensing, um, kind of what you're hitting on is I want real engineers. I want real chemists. I want real mathematicians to take a handful of how to teach. If they have a desire to teach and they have those real degrees, mm -hmm. um, the alternative teacher license, we need to be doing that, okay. which we're not doing very well in Minnesota. Okay. So, and that recently passed, I think, in the legislature. Alternate, right. And that is difference. Alternate licensure versus waivers and variances. Yes, That's, two two separate things. But it, you, a person like me can confuse those. It but, is confusing. It, it but is. But I got it straightened out um, now. So, so thank you. Our <laughs> state <laughs> our state also squanders uh, around 200 million dollars a year uh, because teachers want to become administrators or principal or superintendent someday. More money. So they go on to get their master's of education, which they can do online. Uh, there's a whole lot of programs mm -hmm. out there doing that. Um, I've looked at the coursework. It's not hard. It's, you know, it, it's the master's of education, really, I'm just going to say it, it. It's simple. Um, but we give an automatic reward uh, once they get it, they get like a jump, like 7,000 more a year in their salary. And over half of the teachers in Minnesota have masters, and most of them are masters of education. Mm -hmm. um, so what if we took that $200 million and instead hired real mathematicians and real chemistry guys and mm -hmm. biology people? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Real science guys, mm -hmm. economics uh, professors, engineers, and have a uh, higher starting pay. Mm -hmm. um, we need, we're wasting tons and tons of dollars. Um, yeah, I agree. The other thing is the recent obsession with pre-K. In Finland, they don't even start mandatory until age seven. Uh, as you know, Grunwald and Rolnick are marching around the country spewing, hmm. and it goes back to flawed research, um, a Perry preschool, which if people knew the details, it's laughable. Yeah, well, so, well, we, you know, there's another subject for school that whole pre or for the show is that whole pre-K and it issue. would take a whole show. <laughs> but isn't it really more that people just want a babysitter? Um, for that time, I, I'm sure some people 
I'm sure for some people. But I yet, think that yet there's... the propaganda is out there strong enough right now that is basically saying um, this: you have to have this, or your kids are going to be a failure. That's oh, what yeah. they're saying. Oh yes, you know. Yeah. yeah, but they don't say why. Right. It, they don't really give the evidence for that. But. Right. They they just make all these false claims about return on investment, and okay. it's just not true. All right. But say that, that for another show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, here is the slide that I included, University of Minnesota Office of Institutional Research. And this is important because you might not be able to see it very well, but it compares the different majors, um, College of Science and Engineering, College of Bio Bio Biological Sciences. Um, but anyway, at the bottom you see College of Education. Education majors perform on the bottom of every category on the ACT and SAT. Our teachers perform, te teaching majors perform at the bottom in every single category. Is this something you can do a data practice on and find out a teacher's ACT score? I, I don't know if you've thought of that. Anyway, go on. Um, <laughs> Just... <laughs> um, well, you know, th this is looking at them as a group. Mm -hmm. um, if you're trying to ta track down your child's teacher's performance, um, or the individual. I don't. I don't know. Um, hmm. I wanted to include some research. Cornell University. This is some of what I've looked at. Uh, the teacher's general academic ability and subject knowledge are the characteristics that most consistently predict student learning. We completely throw that out the window. Hmm. Um, how the world's best performing school systems come out on top. This study was done in uh, 2007, and it says there's little evidence that American teacher preparation programs are screening out unsuitable teachers or teaching essential s knowledge and skills. So that gets back to the teacher college is not preparing. Hmm. Okay, so we talked about teacher quality. Here's Common Core. We're talking about future assessment standards, which affects the curriculum because, hey, the uh, Pearson and all these other publishing companies, they've already changed their textbooks to accommodate Common Core. So yes, it does uh, go to the curriculum. Okay. So Common Core, first of all, what I want you to understand is that it, they are unproven standards. You can't point to any location in the world, even the United States of the world, that Common Core standards have been used and proven. Um, now, are schools using Common Core right now in, in the state? Because um, I'm thinking St. Paul Public Schools using them. It's, it's they sounds like it. It's slowly being implemented. Okay. Um, New York State is ahead of us, and they're already having huge problems um, with. Well, we'll, we'll get to okay. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, and and it, the indoctrination or trying to globalize our kids has been mm -hmm. going on for a long time. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gets confused with Common Core because actually. They are two different things, and yet Common Core is incorporating globalizing our kids. Mm -hmm. um, but the globalizing um, well, has been going on. Well, you hear globalizing and say, boy, I, I want my kid to know about other countries. What's wrong with that? Isn't that what globalizing means? It's, it's teaching our kids to be a global citizen rather than being familiar when, with their own history, their own um, government and being an American. They, they want us to be less identifiable as an American and more as, as a, a global citizen. Well, so they want to take away the principles of liberty, freedom, uh, because no other country ha is established on these principles right. of uh, individual rights, right. uh, where you're basically then all the other countries are it's about the collective and of course now the united states is really more about the collective too uh, yes the, that's uh, the direction we're moving yeah. and that's because the parents the younger parents they've been through this system so that's why we're moving to the left mm -hmm. and the parents some parents at times there are certain things going on and they know there's something wrong but you know they they won't stand up quite as strongly as maybe the greatest generation, mm -hmm. they would have identified this stuff in a heartbeat and ran up to the school and said, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. um, I told you the story of uh, one of our elementary schools. 
they boasted about this in the school calendar where they would take the little elementary kids into the auditorium on Monday and Friday. They're wasting learning time doing this, right? Okay, right. And they're having them do the chant like uh, President Obama did this in Africa just recently, the Ubuntu. But they chant, they go, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, I am because we are. Ubuntu, Ubuntu, we am, I am because we are. Ubuntu. And they're teaching them to be part of the collective. Mm -hmm. And they're wanting them to get away from the individual mm -hmm. thinking. And so uh, there were parents that I talked to, a couple that knew it, it was a problem, but they didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I would have been up there and said, what? You know, I'm sorry, my kid's not going to participate. My child will sit out in the hallway reading a book if, if this is what you have to do. Mm -hmm. But um, individually, we have no power, but together we do, and I, I hope. But anyway, Common Core is replacing objective measurements of knowledge and skills with subjective appraisals of students' attitudes and behavior. And so... Well, let me go. Isn't Common Core the same as uh, No Child Left Behind and... Uh, race to the top, and uh, what was the other one? I mean, Michelle Bachman started off her uh, congressional career uh, uh, challenging um, the school's curriculum in this collective type thing. Aren't, right. th aren't they the same thing? No, I mean, no, they're not. They they have some things similar. Okay. Um, um, the Common Core. <clears throat> really isn't race to the top that's but race to the top race to the top is is uh, president obama's u.s department of education uh, that is similar to no child left behind that was george bush's mm -hmm. and that's the problem the left and the right mm -hmm. are, are doing this thing that's really um corroding our educational system. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, it shouldn't even be happening. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't even be a U.S. Department of Education. Right. But the race to the top uh, is is the Obama administration trying to take over education in every like, state. Like he's doing in health care, he's ta race. This is taking over the education system. Right. Exactly. So. Is it the same thing? It, it, it's a part of a bigger unit. Mm -hmm. um, so race to the top dollars were used to bribe states to adopt Common Core standards. Mm -hmm. And they call it state standards. That's uh, part of the propaganda with the creation as they try to claim that it was state-led. Um, uh, that's what, what they tout. Uh, but it was written by uh, a few well-connected non-qualified education pre entrepreneurs. Um, hmm. And so what they put out front to make it look even more so state-led was uh, they used two private trade associations um, based in Washington, National Governors Association and Council of Chief State School Officers. So this has been through no education, there's been no refining. This is coming from just a single source group of people that are paying a lot of money to people to push this. Right. They did this in partnership with Achieve Inc. And uh, Achieve Inc. had some governors on the board and then there's some corporate CEOs. Okay. And you'll see that like uh, Bill Gates is, what funds that. Okay. There's a long list of corporations. Um, and sadly, Tim Pawlent, Governor Pawlenty, was, mm -hmm. was on this board as well. So there's enough governors involved that they say, oh, this was state-led. Um, but the interesting thing is that, first of all, those two trade associations, they own the copyright to Common Core. Hmm. So they're going to get big dollars. Wow. And the other thing is that they were given no grant of legislative authority by the states to draft these national standards. Wow. Now, <laughs> when you, you wonder why does Palenti and why does... Jeb Bush push Common Core. Yeah. If it doesn't make sense, follow the dollars. Right. Okay. Because even Jeb Bush, his foundation of excellence in education, mm -hmm. guess who funded it? Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Okay. So big dollar signs. Hmm. And they, you know, who's the big donors for their campaigns? The corporations. The lobbyists own us. Now the lobbyists and the corporations are trying to own our children. Right. So right. through Common Core, they're, they're going to dumb us down, 
make us into a managed economy, yeah. and they're going to create huge databases, which I'm going to get to. Okay. Um, well, you know, this, this is why on this show I've been pushing uh, the constitutional amendment from parentalrights.org that would say uh, every parent has a fundamental right to raise their children in the upbringing and education of the parent's choice. That in itself would change a lot of this. Right. Yeah. But isn't it sad that you even have to... Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have to do that now. It's something that was so fundamental is just is evaporating very, very quickly. Yes, yes. And is. it may be too late, but um, you still got to <laughs> fight on it. But we got a caller here. Oh, oh we just missed, lost the caller. <laughs> All right, call back. Um, all right, go ahead. So the leverage buyout of No Child Left Behind, basically it was Chicago-style thuggery. Um, 2009 stimulus bill allowed $4.35 billion to go to the U.S. Department of Education. And, of course, Arne Duncan said, hey, I'm going to push co Common Core. So they came to the states in uh, November of 2009, uh -huh. and they said, look, we're going to give you an opportunity to get out from under No Child Left Behind. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give you a chance at race to the top federal dollars. Um, if you agree to accept implementing Common Core standards uh, by January 2010. So that's just a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Sight unseen, the standards weren't even, they didn't even see the standards. you got to accept the standards before you know what they are. <laughs> that's right. You have to pass it before you know what's in it. That's yeah. what they did. Wow. Because That's the, the name of the game now. The draft uh, Common Core standards were released in March of 2010. Hmm. So how stupid is that, huh? Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but that you know, it's like um, I I don't just um, I I don't know. So well, and this is this is <laughs> another reason to abolish the federal Department of Education, and like you said, there is no constitutional authority for that department. And and you know, uh, Governor Pawlenty and Governor Dayton mm -hmm. don't have the right to do what they're doing. Um, so anyway, Minnesota did not receive any race to the top dollars, but we did get a waiver from No Child Left Behind. Mm -hmm. And then we adopted the Common Core English Language Arts. And um, uh, Just the language arts part, not the math part? Not the math. What do you, I, you know, this is almost even sinister. They probably figured they didn't have to do the math because it was already so bad that if we do the language art, that's all we had to do. It's the language um, arts. <laughs> my understanding, yeah, my understanding was that there was some, you know, we we had just updated our math standards. Okay. I think it would be def it would have been too difficult to justify adopting these standards when we had just spent so much time okay. and money upgrading right. and redoing our own. But there was, I think, a professor, a mathematics professor at University of Minnesota that came to somewhere, um, I don't know if there was some committee or something mm -hmm. that decided this and said, look, our standards are way better. Hmm. But Dr. Milgram, who was on the validation committee for the Common Core Math, said it, it will devastate our kids. They, they won't even get to calculus by the time they get to be a senior that, um, you know, they would start algebra in ninth grade or something. and. Anyway, there was just all kinds of problems mm. with it, and he didn't sign off on it. So mm. S Dr. Stotsky, um, she was invited on the validation committee, and she asked them for the research of what they used to come up with the Common Core standards. I don't, I don't think she ever got them. Mm. So she wouldn't sign off on it. They were trying to give it some legitimacy right. by inviting her because she's the only one who had written standards before mm. and probably the only one qualified to do it. And she said that the, the English language arts are empty skill set, um, that it won't Whoa. prepare students for a four-year college or university, and that it's neither rigorous nor research-based. And she said that it was written hastily like the uh, Obamacare website. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's basically, basically yeah. what she, she didn't say that, but <laughs> she just said it was written hastily because they wanted to replace literature with the informational text. So, text. So, um, by high school, the only 30% will be um, literature, and 30% and literature, 70% training, training text, inf informational text like Microsoft training. So I brought a book um, mm -hmm. that's on the 10th grade reading list. Mm -hmm. and, um, Why don't you just hold up the cover of the book there? Oh, uh, Dreaming, Dreaming in Cuban. 
Okay, dreaming in Cuban, okay. So I marked a paragraph. I thought that you should, it's just short here. All right. You should read. You want me to and read this? You should, <coughs> but here's the thing. You read it, but you stop when you think you should stop. Hugo and Felicia stripped in their room, dissolving easily into one another. Well, I, that's it. I, I shouldn't read this. If that's what you're saying, I mean, no. That, that, I have verified that. That's on the 10th grade reading list. Okay. It's pornography. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't believe it when I saw this on the internet, so I ordered the book myself, and I looked up on the Common Core website the, um, I can't remember what part it was, but they had, I finally found, because it's not always easy to find, the, the reading list, and, and this, this is true. This hmm. is on it. So uh, they treat, Common Core treats historical documents uh, with differently, um, without context. There's no cursive. You know, the elite, are, their kids are always yeah. going to write cursive, but There's but no not. cursive in this? No. That's critical for brain function yes. for kids, you know, to, to learn um, the, the, the eye-hand coordination. Oh, anyway. It definitely yeah. is. There's, that's a whole... But anyway, we're treating our kids like rab lats. Rab, <laughs> rab, rab rats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dyslexic, too. Yeah. But I wanted to point out, Bill Gates has funded this, and he said in an interview, it would be great if our education stuff worked, but it, that we won't... That we won't know for probably a decade. Wow. Right. So and we're, we're reinventing stuff when we don't have to, when we have proven stuff that's worked over and yes. over and over again for years and years and years, yes. and we're just reinventing it for only one purpose here, it sounds like, and that's just to make our kids stupid. For, okay. And, and fund a lot of money to a lot of things. Different people. We're getting short on time, but I want to yeah, say okay. this is going to cost us millions of dollars in unfunded mm -hmm. mandate, computer equipment, software, database administrators, textbooks, uh, teacher training, professional development, textbooks. Guess who's making money? Pearson, Microsoft, you know, all these corporations. Um, why, why would Minnesota, who, who've historically done such a great job, why would we give their, our power over to the federal government? Because in the end, when there's a problem, there'll be no one to go to. You mm -hmm. can't go to your school board. You can't go to the state. The federal government will own us. Why would Minnesota do that? And the last thing is that um, more testing. This is mm -hmm. testing, no child left behind, uh, testing on steroids. The teachers are definitely going to be held accountable uh, if they don't know that by now, this is this is going to be an extreme. And creating the database, they're going to be keeping this database on our kids like you wouldn't believe. Family income, your religious and political affiliation, are there guns in your home, history of uh, health history, disciplinary records, and you've heard of the sixth grade, uh, sixth six-year-old kid, Yeah, that um, they were going to label him as... Um, a sex offender. Right. Well, the mom finally that got that. Kissed a girl's that's hand. That's the yeah. kind of thing that they'll, they'll, they'll say, we need to come into your home. There's a problem. Absolutely. Well, that's what they were trying to do. But yeah. they're building... This is part of this whole thing, is building this database, and they're going to... Because Obama administration gutted the FERPA laws. We, we have no privacy rights through this. Parents mm. don't anymore. And so... Um, they're going to share with the, the corporations and the federal government under the guise of educational research. Mm -hmm. And so if this was about our guns, we would be storming the Capitol. But right. this is about our kids. Why aren't we storming the Capitol? Because it came in like a thief in the night, yeah. and no one knows about it. Right. And that's why we're trying to get parents to know, you know what? You have to do something in numbers. This is going to devastate our country. Mm -hmm. It's It's... Well, we we only have a couple <coughs> minutes left. I want to want you to kind of summarize <coughs> in one minute here anything you think you need to say quickly. But then, what are what do we need to do? What are what does a parent do? What a you know a grandparent. Um, okay, talk to your legislators. 
uh, research shows that really doesn't take that many people to contact them mm -hmm, to get right. them to notice that there's a problem mm -hmm. or there's something that they should be paying attention to. People in my group are talking to legislators, but it's going to help if the parents go, hey, you know what? I've looked into Common Core. Please go to Minnesotans Against Common Core website, mm -hmm. commoncoremn.com. Learn as much as you can. Um, you don't have to be an expert. But go to the legislators and say, why would Minnesota give up our rights to our standards? Why let them in the door? They're going to be bringing in the science and something else soon, too. They're moving forward, and um, we have to speak up. Go to your school board and say no. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to other parents. The more numbers, the better. Tell people to go. I mean, it sounds crazy, but wouldn't you be doing the same thing if they were taking away your gun rights? Mm -hmm. They're going to be learning if you have guns in your home or not through your kids. Mm -hmm. um, but So that's the way to look at this. They're, they're doing this to take away your gun rights, too. <laughs> for many Indirectly. purposes. Yeah. There, there, well, there's many purposes, but the database if that's what you need to get active, then focus on that issue. Right. Uh, you know. For you gun, gun rights. Write a letter, there. write yeah. an email, make phone calls. We've mm -hmm. got to get the people that we're electing to know that this did not go through our legislative process. That's the biggest problem. Uh, that's where it violates um, Article 4, Section 4. The United States shall guarantee to every state a Republican form of government. This did not go through our legislature. Our, our represented people in the legislature should be screaming that, no, we need to go back and review this. We need to listen to both sides mm -hmm. to make a decision. Mm -hmm. um, and I, this, I would also say this. The most important day in every two years to get stuff done is February 4th, your precinct caucus. And you have to show up there. And you have to, that's when you talk to your legislators, people in authority. And if you don't show up there, it's just a lot, lot harder to work to stop this stuff. A lot harder. Well, AJ Kern, thank you very much for coming on this show. Thanks for having me. Uh, it was, it was great. fun. Uh, I got more research to do. You just, <laughs> uh, just kind of getting things going here. And uh, we'll have you back if you can. I appreciate I'd it. I'd love to. And, and remember, folks, uh, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? And also, good men don't do nothing. Get out there, do something. Protect your kids. It's your responsibility. God bless. Have a great week.